Welcome to Centauri Story Fry. Today we'll be talking about Batman Black and White Statue by Norm Brayfogle. Child in the 90s. Let's do this. Welcome back. Here we are again. Another Batman Black and White Statue. This time it's about, uh, it's about the 90s, man. It's about going back in time. Now, when I was a kid, Norm Brayfogle was doing a lot of work on Detective. I think he switched to Batman later, but Detective Comics was the one I started reading. Um, really got me into it. So I've been waiting a long time for Norman Brayfogle to get some respect. He was my Batman artist. He was on Detective, but Perro was on Batman. Okay, here we go. Here's the box, real simple. Shows in there, okay. Here's the picture of the art there. And this is kind of a riff on a pretty famous cover, an early detective comics cover. Um, you see it everywhere. It's blue. I'll have to put it up there. There's the back. And there's the side. Pretty simple. My numbering there. All right, there we go. Let's open it up. Hopefully it's not broken. You never know with these things, man. They are fragile. They show up broken all the time. Hopefully we got a good one. Right over there. I have no idea what the top is. I guess they don't want to tell me. Knife. Knife. There we go. Okay. Easy. Let's open it up. Let's see what they gave us. Yeah. Norm Bray Fogel. Awesome artist. Always, always did a lot with capes. Of course, I love capes. And he always made these big, grandiose capes. Kind of like... Farland. He had an interesting style. It was very kinetic, very fast paced. He had pretty good action sequences. The Batmobile was like this. Looks is very original. Like a sled, this blue sled. But Whoa. Okay, it's different. And he always had leads. He's oh, oh, oh. He's a zip. He always had these uh, expressions on Batman's face, like surprised expressions. The cowl was animated. It seems like. Okay, here we go. Um, I made 5,000 of these, looks like. Get this out of the way. It's 540. Uh, 5,000. There we go. Made in China. And it looks like the body and the cape are separate. It's a little different. And he's really, really light. And this thing's crazy light. Where's the body? Yeah, looks pretty good. He's got the classic yellow spotlight on the on the basketball. You see that, all right. I'll get close ups here in a minute. That's it. Standard. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see the back when the cape's on there, but there you go. That musculature, it's spot on for uh, one bright level. I'm not sure which way this goes. Uh, yeah, I guess that's the only way to go. Okay, there we go. Now, what do we got here with this cape? This is, little, this is interesting. I don't think I've ever seen one designed like this before. But it's definitely big. Apparently it's his head, his cow, and his cape. How cool is that? That's pretty neat. Look at that. Look at that thing flowing. Here, let's get this out of the way. And the knife and stuff. We don't need that. Here we go. Look at that. Can you see it all right? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Looks like we got some texture on the back. All right, let's see how he fits. It's got a little magnet in there. Getting all fancy with these now. I'm digging it. I'm okay with that. As long as it fits. Actually hits the ground. How's that look? Can you see it at all? Let's see. Actually hits the ground. It's like rests right on the ground. It's interesting. Looks like it fits though. Alright, let's let's uh, let's turn it around and get some close-ups. Yeah, the cape rests right on the bottom there, so hopefully... You, you, when you get one, if you decide to get one, um, it's going to be a tight fit right there on the bottom there. Rest right where that peg is, kind of where the little cushion is on the base. Well, he's looking pretty good. The cape is uh, pretty original. It looks a lot like his capes would be. The face, I don't know. It's close. It's close to it. Almost would have. It's. I mean, I look at it and I can tell it's very full, but especially, but it's mainly the body and the cape. The cowl looks a little. Funky to me. It's okay. He always he always drew like a really lean Batman, kind of like you know, like what Apero was doing and and what Neil Adams would do. So he was really muscular and lean. He always looked like he was really fast. 
I got some junk on my cape, which I'll have to get off later on right there. It looks like glue. That sucks. A little dirty. But there's some interesting texture. I don't know if you can see that. But, uh, let me get a little closer. That little texture there. A little bit of texture there on that cape. Pretty cool. I don't know if I've seen them do that before on these Batman Black and Whites, but it's looking pretty good. There's a little imperfection there, and the bell's kind of sloppy. Honestly, I think my love for the draw for the artist, who I'm not sure if he's still around. I know he got like there was something wrong with him, and he couldn't continue. But he worked with Alan Grant, I believe, on a pretty long run of Detective Comics, and I think after that he, uh, if I remember right, they did I think it was Shadow of the Bat. I believe. And he also did some painted work. Like, there was a book, I think it was like, I think it was called Holy Ter Terror. It's not the, uh, sip. It's not the Frank Miller one. But, I think it was the same name. But you should check it out. Really cool artist, I think. He's very fast, very kinetic. His fight scenes are pretty good. And I still remember the first comic I, I bought when I got into comics with my own money. And I think it was Detective Comics with Etrigan in it. I just can't find it or I'd bring it out. But I think I'm going to be a little biased when it comes to this thing. So there are imperfections. The paint's a little bit sloppy in places. Like the belt here. And up here. That looks like... I, got, I, don't, know, I don't think I got the best one here. I think you're going to see a lot of variation. Especially right here. And then, ooh, it's a little sloppy. There's a little weird nick there. Mine's all... Mine's got all kinds of problems. It's got freaking glue on it. Or something. Uh, anyway, I think it's a pretty sweet piece. I've just been waiting for a Brayfold for so, so long. And it's going to be great. I'm going to put it right next to the Apero and get him up there next to Bane. I, I don't know. It would have been nice to see some textures, but that's kind of how his capes were. It's like, it was just like a black a black mess. So it actually looks a lot like his art. Uh, you're going to love it or hate it, I think. But I think it's pretty sweet. The cowl is not quite... It's not quite there for me. The face looks pretty close, but something about the cow. Like the ears should almost be longer. And he was doing that a lot too, this will this Batman always had those weird shoulder pads. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, as a child, I mean this is where he was one of my first first and favorite artists. I think he was like one of those artists that I actually looked up to find out who was doing it. I mean I think anybody who's a comic fan probably remembers that first time they're like, Okay, who's the who's who's drawing this? And for me, it was him. Or it could have been Perez, that George Perez guy. It was one of those two. It was the first two artists that was like, okay, I gotta know who was, draw who was drawing this. Oh, if you got any, you guys any stories like that? Anybody else remember that first time they looked at, looked in the credits to find out who was writing or drawing? Because I think Grant Morrison might have been him the first time I had to find out who, was, who the writer was. Like during the Invisibles or something. Something like that. I was like, who the hell is doing this? Alright, that was a quick look at the uh, Batman Black and White statue by Norman Brayfold. Going really fast, just to show off some of his art. I got some old, just random comics that he did. Um, it's pretty cool, right here. We got uh, Anarchy. I think this is the second appearance of Anarchy. If you guys know that character, I believe he's in uh, Arrow, if I'm not mistaken. Well, let's see if we can find a good... Sh some good pictures here. Some quality. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a... There we go. Let's try that out. See this right here? That's, those are the expressions he's on, like I'm talking about. He's always got like this animated face. Surprise. And there's that cape down there. He's a really cool artist. I think he's kind of been like got this uh, original little kind of look. Kind of sketchy. See, he's very uh, a very mobile Batman. Very limber. He does a lot of hamstring stretches and, and such. Well, you find out Anarchy's just a kid, pretty much. There you go. And here's this other one. Pretty sweet looking cover. I like that cover. Anyway, thanks again. Thanks for sticking out. Um, checking out. Thanks again for checking out Centaurus River Fry. Um, have a good one. Remember, Magnum is right. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe out there.